Welcome back. This is lesson four of Machine Learning Zoom Camp session four. And in this uh, lesson, we will talk about precision and recall. Precision and recall are metrics for evaluating binary classification models. In the previous lesson, we talked about the confusion matrix, or also called confusion table. And I think I have a typo here. Let me quickly fix it. This is a way of arranging uh, different types of uh, mistakes and correct predictions. And it consists of true positive, uh, true negative, false positive, false negative. These things, true positive, true negative, and so on, they are often used to define other evaluation metrics. So for example, we can express accuracy as sum of true positive plus uh, true negative, and we divide that by uh, the total number of uh, all the observations. So in our case, it's true positive, true negative, false positive. Uh, false negative and we get accuracy in the same way we can express other binary classification evaluation metrics such as precision and recall and this is what we will do in this lesson so let's start with precision precision tells us how many positive predictions turned out to be correct or more like not how many but fraction of correct positive predictions so it means that uh, we predict some customers as uh, churning, and then out of those, how many are identified correctly. So let's uh, let's draw it. So we have our data set of customers, right? And some of them uh, we predict as churning. Remember, so this uh, predict churn and this predict non-churn. So we're actually not interested in this. So this one is not interesting for us. So we are only interested in this area in prediction. So let me remove this. So we are only interested in those that we predict as churning and non-churning are not interesting for us. So there are some customers for which we predict as churning. So let's remember that some of them are actually churning, right? So these are ones where, you know, the Y is one. So these are the customers that are, that are actually churning. And so here we have our true positive examples that we predict as churning and they turn out to be churning. And then we have false positives, customers that we think are churning, but they are actually not churning. So precision tells us among those that we predicted as churning, what is the fraction of correct predictions? So and here, so this part is correct and this part is not correct. And to make it more concrete, let's imagine we have a group of customers. So the sticky figures in uh, black are customers that are not going to churn. The sticky figures in blue are customers that are going to churn. And we run our model and we predict for this group, uh, we say they churn. And this group, you know, we say they are not going to churn. Right? So this is, let's say we scored all our customers and this is our 0 0.5 threshold. So we now don't look at those that we predict as non-churning. So we forget about them. So now among these four people that we think are churning, one of them is actually not churning, right? So we will send these people, all these four people will get a promotional email. All of them will get discount 25% off, but one of them was not going to churn. So one of them will get promotion and they can enjoy cheaper service. So that person is a false positive. So we have three correct predictions and one an incorrect prediction. So out of four people for which we predicted that they are going to churn, so we have four of them in total, three were correct. So this is precision. So it's three out of four or 75%. So this is precision. Yeah, we can see that uh, uh, the formula for computing precision is uh, we have true positive, which is the number of people that we correctly identified as churning, and we have false positive. So for computing precision, we need to divide the number of true positives by the total number of positive predictions, which is, uh, if we think about this, which is true positive plus false positive. Right? So because this here is uh, the number of people who we think are going to churn. So this is the total number of positive predictions. So that's why we can just sum these two up and uh, we'll get the total number of predictions, positive predictions. So this is the formula for precision and we can quickly implement this precision, let's call it P, which is a true positive divided by true positive plus false, uh, false positive. Right? 
in our case, precision is 64%. So it means that we will send this promotional email. We'll send this promotional email to 311 people and only 210 of them are actually going to churn. It means that approximately 33% are mistakes. So people who are not supposed to get this promotional email, but they get it anyway. This is what precision can tell us. So now let's talk about recall. Precision is we look at fraction of positive predictions that are correct. Uh, recall is a bit different. So instead of looking at fraction of positive predictions where, that are correct, we look at fraction of churning users that we identified correctly. Or positive examples. So this sounds very similar, but it's not. So here, uh, in case of precision, we looked at the customers who, who we make positive predictions. In case of recall, we, um, so let me again draw all the customers that we have. So these are all the customers. We look at customers who are actually going to churn. So this is our y equals one. So these are churning customers. And uh, again, one uh, y equals zero, non-churning customers. We are interested in this part here. So actually, so this one is need, not needed. We don't really care about this. So for us, this part is interesting and this part is not interesting. And like previously, so of course, these are all churn users that are churning, right? And some of them we managed to correctly identify. So this is where our predictions are above the threshold. So this part becomes uh, true positive. So this part here is uh, false positive, but this is not interesting for us now. Uh, it was interesting for us when we were talking about precision, but in case of recall, we're interested in false negatives. So we have all the users that are churning and some of them we identified correctly. And recall tells us what is the fraction of those customers. So how many of them we were able to correctly identify. This is the again correct. And false negatives are errors. And recall tells us what is the fraction of correctly identified churning users. So let's talk, uh, let's again take these uh, sticky figures. So we have these figures, right? And for these people, we make uh, our prediction here. These are customers for the for which the score is above the threshold. Now, for a moment, we forget about uh, these people who are not churning. So we forget about them right now. So what we know now is that uh, for these uh, three, the decision was indeed correct. So we did indeed correctly classify them as churning. But for this person over here, this decision was incorrect. So this person was going to churn, but we didn't manage to identify them correctly. So we the score that our model produced was below the threshold. That's why we classified this person as non-churning. This is uh, what recall can tell us. So recall in this case would be, so we have uh, four uh, customers in total and three of them are correct. So again, like in the previous example, our recall is 75%. So one wasn't identified correctly, but the three others were. So that's why recall is 75%. The formula is quite similar for recall. So let me write it here. So if you remember for precision, it was true positive by div divided uh, by the number of positive predictions. Let me write here, positive predictions. But in case of recall, so it's again uh, true positive, but we divide it by the number of people who actually were going to churn by the number of positive observations. And for us, this is again, true positive divided by the total sum, true positive and false negative. So this is the formula for recall. And uh, we can also quickly implement it here. So let's see, uh, recall is, we have true positive, but in this case, instead of by dividing it by a false positive, we divide it by a false negative and it gives us 54%. So I'll just use this slide. So recall is 54%, which is, uh, so let's see what's the total number here. So this one is 386 and uh, the part above is the same, 110. So this is 54%, which means that 
for 46% of people who are churning, we fail to identify them. So now we see that, uh, remember our accuracy, let's write them, well, let's write it as well here. It's 80%, which looks like it's a pretty high number. It feels like this model must be very accurate. But when we look at precision and when we look at recall, we see that our model is not that good. So for the purpose we want to use, so we want to identify churning users. So for this purpose, accuracy is not the best metric because when we look at this, we think, okay, model is doing pretty well. But when we look at precision and when we look at recall, we see that we failed to identify 46 users and we actually sent a promotional mail to 33% of users who were not going to churn, but they probably uh, will take advantage of our uh, discount. So now we see that our model is not as good as we thought it would be when looking just at the accuracy number alone. So accuracy can be misleading. And especially in cases when we have class imbalance, like for this one, like for term prediction, that's why it's useful to look at metrics like precision and recall. And let me quickly recap it. I know this is a bit abstract and a bit uh, difficult to understand. So if you got this, you can stop, but maybe if you want to uh, hear explanation one more time, uh, let me do this. So again, we have all our customers. These are all customers. And then we split them into four groups. Let me just draw it here. So this is our, so this bigger group for us is true negative, which we didn't really consider. And we have the other part that you know, we have true positive here. We have uh, false positive and false negative. And then for precision, so for precision, we are looking at this part here. So we look at all the users, uh, all the customers that we think are going to churn. So we just look at them alone. So we don't look at anything else. And for them, we look at the fraction of correct predictions over incorrect predictions. So this is our true positive and here our false positive. So for us, precision is the number of true positive divided by true positive plus false positive. For recall, we look at all customers that are churning. So instead of looking at the customers we think are churning, we look at the customers that are actually churning. Right? And we have them here. So some predictions are correct here. So these are our uh, true positive and some predictions are incorrect. These are our false negative, true positive and false negative. And the recall is uh, the fraction of it's true positive divided by the sum of true positive and false negative. So this is a recap and actually I also have this uh, confusion table, right? So we have the confusion table. So we have uh, true positive here, true negative. Then we have uh, false positive here and we have false negative here. And if you look at the confusion table, so actually so precision is this part here. So we look at only the, this, right? So this is precision. Because for precision, we are only interested in cases when our function says it's uh, a positive prediction. And then uh, likewise, uh, we have recall here. So recall for recall, we look at the cases when uh, our label is true, our label is positive. So we look only at these customers. Right, and then we just divide one by another. They are quite useful metrics and takes some time to understand them, to get used to these names, to remember what precision is, what recall is, not to confuse them, also get some time and practice. And I hope it's clearer now what they mean and why it's a good idea to use them, especially in cases when there is class imbalance. Um, so yeah, we looked at precision, we looked at recall. These are useful metrics. And in the next lesson, we will talk about ROC curves and the things there uh, in these curves, they're based also on the values on the confusion matrix that we talked about, and we will see why this is useful. So talk to you soon.